Today we're going to look at differential equations that are modeling growth and decay. Now these will always be of this form here, where dy by dx, or the rate of change, is equal to a constant times y. Now you should recognize that from proportional sorts of things that you've done before, where k is that um, the constant of the proportion of how it's changing according to y. Now if we work through this using the method of separating variables, we need to get y onto the same side as dy. So we end up with 1 over y dy. k is just a constant, so we can leave that where it is, and we bring the x over to the other side to separate it away from the y's. Now we can integrate both sides there. We will get the natural log of y on the left-hand side and kx plus c on the right-hand side. Then we will frequently want this to have um, the equation in the form y equals something. So this would be y equals e to the kx plus c, which we saw on the previous video. We can um, sort that out to be um, a e to the kx, because remember this is e to the kx times e to the c, which is just simply a constant. Now, in terms of growth and decay, we're normally talking about x as being a time variable, so that actually usually gets represented as a t. Now, if you think about um, this final equation we've got here, y equals a e to the kx. If x was 0, then we would have y equals the constant a. So a becomes the value of y when x is 0, or the initial value of y. So we would call that y suffix 0. Um, so if you recognize that you have an equation of this form, you can go straight to using it in this form, y equals a e to the kx, and actually take it one step further and write it as y equals y 0 e to the kx. It's not necessary to memorize that, but it can um, make your steps through working through these questions a little bit faster. Now these are particularly useful for growth and decay questions, and we'll take a look at an example. Right, so pause the video and have a read of this example. And now let's work it through. So we've got a classic car appreciating in value that's um, proportional to its initial value. So I'm going to talk about that as being the v being the value. So the rate at which the value is changing over time is proportional to the value that it started at. So we write that as equal to kv which means that we know it will break down to being in this form as we just saw on the previous slide. So V will be equal to V0 e to the kt. So V is our value. V0 is the initial value. T is the time. And K is that, that proportional constant. So in this case, it's the interest rate, or rather rate of appreciation. So our initial value was 20,000. So we could pop in our 20,000 here. And we get our equation looking like this. Now the next bit of information is that three years later it's 23,000. So we know that we can get a value of 23,000 if we put in that t is three. So we would get this um, equation. And from here we can go through and work out the value of k. Um, now I'm going to go through and solve it algebraically. You can pop that into your cal calculator for equation solver as well. So if we divide both sides by 20,000 we get 1.15 equals e to the 3k. We take log of both sides to undo the e that's happening because we're trying to get down to the k. So then k will equal the natural log of 1.15 over 3, which comes to 0 0.0466. Um, now, since we're talking about rate of appreciation, we would want to express that as a percentage. So that will be 4.7% appreciation. Now, just as a little side note, you will have some textbooks that um, take this equation and put it in particular uh, terms. I tend not to do that because I just start with uh, this equation up here and put it into the terms that fit the uh, question. But you will see that some textbooks take this bit here and here and write this as dp by dt is equal to ip and then this is p equals p0 
e to the i t, um, where p0 is the initial value, i is the rate, and t is the time. I'm just putting that in there because it does appear in some textbooks. I prefer not to go down that route, but if you want to memorize and use that, then you can. I just like to put it in letters that mean something to the question.